Hi everyone and welcome back. The Wave XLR is a small but interesting piece of hardware if you want to easily route and manage your audio in a streaming or a creator setup. But what makes it more interesting is the software in my opinion. So let's have a deep dive on both of them. The Wave XLR is a USB preamp interface for XLR mics. The design is simple and it has only two buttons. The jog wheel that is used for the three modes and the capacitive mute button. As for ports, there is a USB Type-C port to connect it to a PC or Mac, a 3.5mm audio jack for audio monitoring and the XLR port to connect your SL XLR mic. In my setup I'm using the Shure MV7, which is a dynamic mic but you can connect the condenser mic too. The materials are mostly plastic and to me it doesn't feel cheap, the assembly seems to be ok, at least in my unit. Underneath there is a rubber surface so whenever you press or rotate the jog wheel the Wave XLR isn't going to move on your desk. If you want, the faceplate can be changed too. I like the overall design, it's clean and simple. Connecting everything is easy, you just have to connect the USB port to the PC or Mac and the XLR mic to the XLR port and if you want to monitor the audio with a wired headset then connect the 3.5mm audio jack. That's it, simple and almost ready to go. So let's check out the software, the audio setup and eventually some effects on it. Before moving on with the audio customizations and other software integrations, I want to let you know guys that I did pay for the Elgato Wave XLR, so if you like this video please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. This will help me bring more content like this. Thank you so much. Alright guys, first thing first, before connecting everything to the computer, let's head, let's go to the Elgato uh, download section and download the Wavelink software and also the Elgato audio effects. Once you do download and install uh, them, let's open the Wavelink uh, app and you will find this window here. Probably you are not going to have this one, you have to click on the plus button and add the Elgato and, autom and uh, automatically it's going to add the Elgato Wave XLR. If you click on this small sub-menu here, you are going to have some information and some settings for regarding the Wave XLR. Uh, you can change the name for example here, the sample rate which I usually leave at 48 kHz but you can change it on 96. By moving this slider here you can choose how much input gain you want to, to have in the dynamic dynamic mic, for example I'm using the Shure MV7, which is a dynamic mic, uh, you don't want to go um, with this slider over the yellow, let's say the, between the green and the yellow, probably 45 or 40 for maximum and then I can suggest you guys is go to 48 for not uh, for preventing uh, your voice and, and all the audio to be clipping. The phantom power shouldn't be uh, enabled for the dynamic mic. It, it's going to be, uh, you have to enable it only for the condenser mic. Here we have the headphone jack. So here you can decide the volume for the output volume and the mixing between what you are hearing and what you are listening. If you are connecting a headphone um, with a with a 3.5 millimeter jack on the um, uh, Wave XLR, which I'm not, which is not my case because I'm using the wireless headset. And here we have some settings regarding the audio enhancement, which I suggest you guys to always leave on and to enable the clip guard and the wave gain lock. What they do is the clip guard is going to prevent the mic, um, your voice to clip if you are uh, screaming or if you are louder. Uh, than the usual voice and the wave gain lock as the description is going to is saying here is going to prevent other application changing the gain that you have setting here for example you want this gain to be always at 45 db so enabling this one is going to prevent other softwares to change that gain that you have setting that so if you click on save settings to hardware it's going to save the settings into the hardware and you can disconnect the hardware from your computer and you can connect it to another computer if you are using a dual setup for streaming or whatever else here we have the sliders for the monitoring uh, output audio and for the uh, and for the mic audio uh, if you click on here you can decide to link them so they can move at the same moment as with the same percentage I, if you click on this small icon here you can enable the audio effects on each of those two channels for example let me say you want the uh, Elgato AQ to be enabled for the headset so if you let me go back again here and uh, you don't want the Elgato equalizer to be enabled for the microphone so you can click on this small icon here and let me say you want to use the Elgato noise removal 
uh, for the microphone because you have some noises on the room or whatever else is going on so you don't want those noises to be heard on the stream output so you can go here and select the noise remove noise removal and enable for the microphone and disable for the headset because you want the headset to be as small as much natural as you want to be actually i wouldn't uh, use neither the elgato equalizer to be honest uh, so let me delete it and the noise removal i'm going uh, i suggest you guys to use it only for the for the microphone if you click on this channel here you can add an audio input for example let's say you want to add the music to your stream and you want to add the game sounds also to your stream and here is the same thing as we have we are doing here you can enable the uh what you're listening and what is going on what is going out to the to the stream output by uh using these sliders here and again here you can link both of them and uh, also here you can add audio effects if you want and here on this uh, part here we have the monitoring mix and the stream mix so what um this is what is going to the stream output or to the software that you are using for recording and this is the money the output for uh, which whatever device you are using for monitoring in this case i'm using a wireless headset and here you have you can decide how much you want to listen from what is go coming out from the mix from the outputs from the inputs so, uh, excuse me and then you can decide how much you want to listen and you can click here for not listening to yourself to your own voice in this case so that's it for the wave link let's send hubs let's check now the obs settings which are even more simple all right guys setting up the wave xlr in obs is really simple you have the first thing you have to do you have to go through settings then audio then in the mic uh, section you have to choose the mic in uh, the one you you as you as you have seen here the one that is um, mic in elgato wave xlr then on the audio mixer you have to go on this sub menu here where are these three dots properties and then in the device choose the mic in elgato web xlr another nice thing that you can do is to use the stream deck if you have one stream deck to uh, to change the settings on the wavelink what you have to do is to add the stream deck plugin the wavelink plugin <laughs> pardon so you have to go through the plugins on the stream deck and search for the wavelink and click on install i have already installed so uh once you have also the icons if you need it then once you are here you can choose what um what you want to do with the input actions and with the hardware actions i have to say there are not that much settings here just the basic settings but they are uh, anyway useful for example if we want this one i have set it up if the gain for example i want to reduce the gain of the mic as i'm increasing the gain so and this icon i'm using the okay set gain to the default settings if i press this button here so uh, you can use this uh, these actions here for setting up everything you the basic things you need for example you want to change the monitor mix and you want to f uh, you want to fade between the monitor mix and the volume so with this five four, four um icons with his uh, actions uh, pardon you can do uh, the basic thing i which i think are enough for example uh, this is for the effects uh, which i find it nice so you can choose an effect here for example uh, and you have to choose in which input you want to apply the, that effect for example let's say i want to apply it to the microphone and so the integration i have to say it's really simple and really really useful if you are using the stream deck for your streaming or uh, whatever uh, else application you are using uh, one weird thing that i found out is that uh, i have to uh, uninstall the stream deck and also the wave link because with the stream deck already installed uh, when once i install the wave link and connect the microphone uh, i don't know for whatever reason the stream deck was wasn't recognizing the wave link i don't know if it's going to be for all of you guys the same but to me it this one uh, happens so that's the only negative thing that I have to say. But for the rest, I find it really helpful. You can go um, crazy with other audio settings if you want to. But this, I believe, is really the basic. If you want to use the Wave XLR in other scenarios that you have to use the system sound, the Windows system sounds, uh, keep in mind that you have to go through some settings here just in case to be sure that you are using the uh, the correct settings. Uh, okay, I'm using them. In this case, I'm using the wireless headset. So, I'm, But for the mic in, be sure to select the Elgato Wave XLR here. 
So as we can see, this device is currently in use. And one thing I recommend you guys is to leave the device default FX. Don't uh, don't touch this one. And the channels here, leave it as, as they are. And if you have a 3.5 millimeter jack connected to the Wave XLR, because you are using your uh, headset with a connected to the Wave XLR, you have you have to be sure to choose the headphones here. All right, guys. If you want to use the Wave XLR as a de mic, de mic de device in your games, um, for example, here I'm using the uh, Call of Duty Warzone 2.2.0. Here you can choose the um, as a, as a device you can choose the default communication device because if you uh, if you leave it as a default um, device on your Windows uh, audio setup settings, then you can use the default communication device. As you can see here, the game uses operating system default communication devices, so you don't have to go crazy with all the audio routing and whatever else. You just leave it this one and this this is going to be the, def the default communication device so this one is going to be your default mic for your chat and everything else so that's all for this review and quick setup for the Elgato Wave XLR it is powerful and easy to use now this is a small audio interface with a 75 dB preamp so you can connect almost all your condenser or dynamic XLR mics it does the basic audio routing perfectly and with no issues the Wavelink software is amazingly powerful and gives it more value to the Wave XLR. Even if I have to say that the integration with Elgato Stream Deck is a little bit odd, but other than that the integration with the other softwares is almost perfect. You have to consider this device for what it is, a small preamp audio interface for basic audio with a great software. If you need something else because you want to do some podcast, advanced postcard or other advanced audio configuration, then maybe you should look somewhere else for 160 almost and for what it does, especially software customization. I can recommend it as an entry point for your audio setup for streaming, gaming or voiceovers. If you guys enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful, please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.